Back to work. <laughs> You're all right, you know that. You're a good guard, too. No, no kidding. We were talking about you in the barracks last night. We figure you're about the best guard they've got out here. And you know why? Because you don't play no favorites, that's why. Not like that last guy, huh, Smitty? Brother, did he have it in for me? Oh, he made me work twice as hard as the other fellas here. But you, everybody's the same with you. Everybody works just as much and just as hard. Okay, quit the talk and get back to work. Okay, okay. Hey, look, we've been working pretty steady for the last hour or so. Don't you think we could have a smoke? Well... Come on, we'll work twice as hard for you afterwards. Gee, we sure could use a smoke. Well, okay. But, uh, if anybody comes along, you know what to do. Sure, sure, we duck the butt. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I ain't got any matches. You got a light? Hey! Come on, get over there. You can't get away with this. Yeah, but I did. Now, you take it easy, chum, and you'll be all right. Now, we swap clothes. What? You heard me. Stripped. What the... Stripped! Here, Smitty, hold his gun. Okay, All right, we're going to take a little walk. All of us. Come on down here and line up in a column of deuces. You two, come on, move. All right, come on, come on, come on. Forward march. Hell. Halt. What is this? You're no prisoner, guard. All right. Get out of that truck. Reach! I want that truck, and I mean business. Okay, you guys. I'm taking off. Anybody want to come along? What about you, Smitty? No, I, I think I'd better stay, Butch. You ain't gonna get no better chance of getting out of here. He's not kidding, Sarge. The escaping prisoner didn't get far. He had broken into an empty house on the outskirts of the post. A passing motorist had seen the break-in and notified the military police. Okay, men, take your places. Within 24 hours, the prisoner was recaptured and returned to the stockade. But this entire escapade could have been avoided if the guard had been alert to his duties and responsibilities. Almost every enlisted man may someday be called upon to serve as a prisoner guard. Since a prisoner guard normally is the sole person in direct charge of a group of prisoners and alone is responsible for their custody and control, he should be mature, experienced, and thoroughly trained in his duties and responsibilities.
You will be trained in advance on how to accomplish your duties and responsibilities as a guard. Apply yourself to this training. Do not take chances by learning the hard way while on the job. You must know how to maintain custody and control and direct prisoners so that their assigned duties are accomplished effectively and efficiently. There are three basic requirements for a prisoner guard. Vigilance, firmness, and impersonality. That a guard has to be vigilant is obvious. You must always be alert, not only for an escape attempt, but for any unusual actions or conduct of the prisoners in your charge. You must be firm and positive in directing the prisoners so that they will do their work well and efficiently. You must always be impersonal and never become familiar or talkative with prisoners. Your conversation with prisoners should be limited to that necessary to get the job done. The confinement officer is responsible for the custody classification of prisoners. There are three custody classifications. The most severe is maximum custody. This custody grade is reserved for those prisoners considered to require special custodial controls because of conduct or known characteristics of a dangerous, violent, troublemaking nature. A maximum custody prisoner will not normally leave the stockade except when absolutely necessary, and then only in the custody of an experienced armed guard. Next are the medium custody prisoners. While they are not considered as representing danger to life or property if they escape, they do require continuous supervision. Prisoners in this custody grade may be employed outside the stockade under armed guards. After observing their conduct, as many of them as possible are placed under an unarmed supervisor. When armed guards are necessary, prisoners should be employed in groups of six or more, each group with an armed guard. Those prisoners needing little or no supervision are classified as minimum custody prisoners. They will be under the control of unarmed supervisors and may be employed outside the stockade in larger groups than medium custody prisoners, thus permitting the maximum utilization of guard personnel. Prisoners in minimum custody grade can be designated as installation parolees. They will then work without any direct custodial supervision. Prisoners with different classifications must never be mixed on details. Proper custody classification by the confinement officer assures the most economical utilization of manpower. Private First Class Brown is in his second week of a 30-day assignment as a prisoner guard. At the morning guard mount, he'll learn his assignment for the day. Some guards will be given work details. Other guards will have special assignments, such as escorting prisoners to the hospital, to a special appointment, or to a court-martial. Those on duty but not posted will remain in the guard room. They will be used for later assignments and are available in the event of an emergency, such as an escape, fire, or other disorder. Today, Brown will guard a work detail composed of medium custody prisoners. Just before the assembly of his detail, Brown signs for and draws his assigned weapon, a riot-type shotgun and ammunition. No matter what type of weapon is required by the assignment, a guard must have fired at least a familiarization course with it. At the main gate, the assistant guard supervisor helps Brown personally verify the identity of each prisoner in the detail and outlines what he should do if a custody or control problem arises. Brown is given a list of the prisoners on his detail by the supervisor, showing their names and custody grade. He also receives specific instructions for conduct of the detail and where and how the prisoners are to be employed. Since Brown's detail will be a long way from the stockade, the trip will be made by truck. The detail is halted six to eight paces from the rear of the truck. The truck driver takes the guard's shotgun and guards the prisoners while Brown climbs aboard. Brown then takes his shotgun from the driver, moves to the front of the truck, 
where he can keep the detail in view and orders the prisoners to get on the truck. The prisoners move forward in single file and drop their tools at the rear of the truck. In the truck, the prisoners move to positions designated by the guard and are seated. By previous arrangement, based on stockade SOP, the guard and the truck driver are agreed on the custody and control measures to be followed. Loading completed, the driver secures the tailgate or safety belt. Once the prisoners are seated in the vehicle, they are not allowed to rise until the trip has been completed. The guard is alert and vigilant at all times and keeps the prisoners under constant observation. Hand tools to be used by the detail are secured in the cab of the truck by the driver. Should any problem arise during the trip, Brown will communicate with the driver by prearranged signals. These usually will be sharp knocks on the back or roof of the cab. Other prisoner details with work projects near the stockade are marched to the job sites. During the march, the prisoners will be kept at attention and marched in a military manner. Normally, the guard will place himself six to eight paces to the rear and slightly to one side. He will thus have an unobstructed view not only of all prisoners, but of the road ahead. The detail is marched on the left side of the road facing traffic. They are far enough off the road so that it would be difficult for a prisoner to escape by leaping aboard a passing car or truck. When the detail must cross the road, like when approaching an intersection, a flanking movement will be executed so that the road can be crossed in the shortest time. Before entering an intersection, the guard makes sure that the roadway is clear. Otherwise, there is danger that prisoners of his detail might interfere with cross traffic or even possibly attempt an escape. When a single prisoner is to be moved some distance from the stockade to another facility for dental treatment, court-martial investigation, medical examination, or similar purpose, the trip may be made by quarter-ton truck. In addition to the driver, one armed guard is normally enough for the move. The prisoner gets in first and sits on the left side of the rear seat. The guard is then seated on the prisoner's right, his weapon out of the prisoner's reach. Prisoner guards know that there may come a time when one or more prisoners may try to escape. A guard often can prevent such an escape by a firm, sharp order to the prisoners. If this is not effective, the guard orders the other prisoners to lie down, puts a round in the chamber of his weapon, and calls out halt twice in a loud, clear voice. If the prisoner does not halt, the guard will fire, but always to disable and not to kill. The guard will promptly return the detail to the stockade so that proper disciplinary action may be taken. PFC Brown's detail has reached its destination and will be unloaded from the truck. The unloading procedures are the exact reverse from the loading procedures. As the prisoners unload one at a time, they will pick up their tools and form into ranks to be marched to the work site. During the work period of his detail, P.F.C. Brown places himself so that he can watch every man, yet is far enough away to prevent assault or being disarmed by a prisoner. 
After working for some time with prisoner details, Brown is aware that there are three basic principles important to the handling of work details. Firmness and fairness combined with constant vigilance. By issuing orders in a firm, decisive manner, he can be reasonably certain that they will be obeyed instantly and without question. By being fair to all prisoners in his detail, Brown avoids much grumbling. Most common problems met by guards are attempted fraternization, slow down or sit down. Often a combination of these may be encountered. When prisoners fail in their attempts to get friendly with a guard, they may try a slowdown of their work, or even complete stoppage by a sit-down. PFC Brown has learned that such control problems usually can be handled without too much trouble. In a firm, decisive manner, he orders the prisoners to stop the nonsense and get back to work. Of course, if this doesn't get results, he'll inform them of the penalties they can expect under the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Then he'll again order them to get back to work. As a last resort, Brown can march them back to the stockade. If they refuse to be marched back, he will send word back to the stockade by whatever means available, such as a passing motorist, and ask for assistance. So far, Brown has never had to march a detail of prisoners back to the stockade on this account. A guard is always alert to what the prisoners of his detail are doing. He is never surprised or caught off guard. By his firmness, a guard keeps things working smoothly in his work detail. A guard must never be unsure of what must be done or how it will be done. Through impersonality, the effective and efficient guard ensures that no prisoner is favored over the others. The guard must always remember that by maintaining proper custody, control, and discipline of the prisoners on his detail, he is aiding the basic purpose of the rehabilitation program of the stockade. This basic purpose is always to return prisoners to duty as better trained, better disciplined, and more self-respecting soldiers as early as possible.